Welcome to the dilution calculation video tutorial. There are a lot of good reasons to um, use dilutions, um, especially in the allied health field. Many pharmaceuticals are prepared in a highly concentrated stock solution. And then it's up to the nurse to do the dilution so that we have the correct dosage for the patient. So all of these um, dilution calculations you can see the formula on your handout, C1V1 equals C2V2. Some textbooks will describe it as M1V1 equals M2V2. Um, and I think that the using M is for molarity and that's something chemists love, but this calculation works for all different types of concentration units, so I prefer the more global C1V1 equals C2V2. So, how did we end up needing to have these dilution calculations? Well, let's come over here. And most drugs and many compounds are solids. And so if we're weighing out the solids, we have to weigh out enough that we trust the weight. It would be hard to just need one crystal and try to look for the perfect crystal. So we end up making a concentrated stock solution. So we would call this C1. And then we want to make a dilution. So here is going to be our new solution. It will have a new concentration, C2, and whatever volume we need to make would be our V2. So in most cases, the calculation we're trying to solve is what is the volume we would need of our concentrated stock solution to make a dilute solution. So for example, if I take this bulb and I pull out 5 milliliters of our concentrated stock solution, and we transfer that to our flask, and then we'll dilute with water. Okay, so you can already see, you can already start to compare the, the intensity. Of course, we're not always lucky enough to have beautifully um, colorful solutions. Many solutions are clear, and we don't even know that a solute has been dissolved. Okay, just a few more squirts here, and we'll have our dilute solution. So then, if, then of course, we always want to mix. Oh, whoops. There we go. Okay. And so now if we look at the color of these two solutions, we can see the vibrant bright blue of our concentrated stock solution and then the lovely pale blue of our dilute solution. So now let's connect this to the calculations. All right. So to have some notes here, right, we have our concentrated stock solution. And then we have our new, this will be our dilute solution. Okay, and so there'll be some sort of volume here. And then this is the concentration. So in many applications, this would be the, the dosage that was needed for the patient to receive the drug. And then typically the main question we're looking at is how much of this concentrated solution is needed. So um, we'll just start with a regular, more like an IV solution type question. How many liters of a 0.025% mass over volume KCL solution, potassium chloride, can be prepared from 200 milliliters of a 4.5% mass over volume stock solution, right? Because we notice here we can use these calculations with any type of concentration unit. So the key here is to make sure that we've linked 
the concentration and volumes together appropriately. That seems to be the biggest challenge because then solving it will be al simple algebra. So if we look here, right, how many liters of, so how many liters of, we can see that this information is all linked together. We're trying to find this volume and this is our concentration. Now we could call these ones or twos, but I noticed that this concentration is much smaller than this one, so I'm going to call this V2 and C2 to keep it in a line with our, our diagram. And now we have, um, here's our V1, right? The milliliters, rec you recognize that as a volume. And then there's our concentration units. So we, we correctly linked the concentrations and the volumes together. Now we look and we see that we're trying to solve for V2. When we solve this expression for V2, right, so V2 is going to be C1, V1, divided by C2. At this point, it becomes what we call plug and chug. We've identified all the variables and we've solved the algebraic expression. So now we can um, complete the calculation. So 200 milliliters and 4.5% mass volume divided by 0.025% mass volume. So notice how the units are helpful, right? The percent mass volumes cancel, and we're left with milliliters, which we're trying to calculate a volume, so that works out perfectly. All right, so now we take and we punch those numbers into our calculator. And the calculator tells us that we would be able to produce 3,600 milliliters of a 0.025% mass volume potassium chloride solution. And then, of course, last but not least, once we've finished a calculation, take a breath, savor the moment, and then check for sig figs. Right? In this example, we have three sig figs here, two sig figs here, two sig figs here, right? Because leading zeros never count. The decimal point is here, so we count the trailing zeros. So our final answer should be two sig figs, which is what we're showing. So we have solved our first practice problem. All right, now let's try another one. Hydrocortisone is used as an anti-inflammatory for localized pain. You need to prepare a 50 milligram per milliliter solution of hydrocortisone for an injection. You have 5 milliliters of a 200 milligram per milliliter stock solution. How many milliliters of the 50 milligram per mil solution can you prepare? This one is very similar to the one up above. We're wanting to know how much solution we can prepare. So let's dissect it like we did the first one. All righty. How many milliliters? There it is again. There's the volume. We're not sure about. This is the concentration you need to prepare. What do we have? We have five milliliters. There's our V1, and then there's our C1. Okay, so the algebra hasn't changed. V, V2 is still calculated the same way. So we, we're back to plug and chug. 200 milligrams per milliliter. There's our C1 and our volume, 5 milliliters. And then our, the desired concentration is 50. Now notice we've used very different concentration units from the last one, but this, um, this calculation works regardless, right? Because the milligrams per mil all cancel, 
And once again, we're left with milliliters, which is a volume unit. So now we take the time to plug it into our calculator. And we see that we have the ability to produce 20 milliliters of the solution. Um, of the hydrocortisone. Okay, and then we're back to sig figs again, right? To clean up those last bit of details. And we see here, this one's pretty straightforward. All of our values are only one significant figure, and our answer has one significant figure. So we're done. And then we box the answer so it's easy to grade. All right, so these two questions have been very similar, and so let's try, let's mix it up a little bit. So on the next page of your handouts, we will, there we go, we'll look at an intravenous solution of sodium lactate. Um, let's see. Right, it contains 1.72% weight over volume. Now, I did this on purpose, right? So remember that not everyone is going to use mass over volume, even though that would be the most correct expression. It's very common to also see weight over volume. So don't let that fool you or get you off track. All righty. So we have our sodium lactate solution at this concentration. It's in water. So um, we have 120 mils of a 5% solution. Oh, this is, we know what this is, just like the previous one. You guys should be getting good at these now. Oh, how much water do we add? All right, so this one has a little bit of a twist to it. You see, hopefully you see where we're going with this. All right, so there's our volume, our initial volume and our initial concentration. We recognize those as the V1 and the C1 because we have the higher concentration and they're linked by the word of. And then this is the concentration that we want to make. And so how much of our materials do we have? What, how much can we make? So we're back to V2 again from the previous page. So we'll go ahead and do the calculation. So we would have 5% weight over volume. And then we would have 120 mils. And we want to make a 1.72 solution. All right, so we punch this result into our calculator. And we get, yeah, that looks right. Let me do that one again. Okay, so we would get 348.8 milliliters. All righty, so now this one's going to give us a little more work. Um, sig figs. We have three sig figs, two, and three. So the two sig fig data is going to limit our result. And so we're going to end up needing 350 milliliters will be the volume of solution. Okay, but now let's think back to the beginning, right? How we actually physically do this solution. We will have 120 milliliters of the 5%. And then we want to have a final volume of the, um, of the 1.72 percent. All righty. So how much water do we add, right? So we already have 120 mils, and we want our final volume to be 350. So if we look there, we see we're going to have to add 230 milliliters of water. So this one is um, 
one step into a more practical setting, the type of calculation that would be done in a, in a real context. Okay. And then last but not least, let's try this last practice problem here. If we mix 125 mils of water with 25 mils of a 4.45% mass over volume glucose, what will be the resulting concentration? So this one is slightly different. Let's look here. Um, these will, there's our initial volume and our initial concentration of glucose. And now we're going to do a dilution, right? We're going to add water. But this is not V2, right? Remember, V2 is going to be the 125 mils of water that we add plus the 25 mils of the glucose solution. So V2 is going to be 150 milliliters, right? And then what's well, the resulting concentration? That's what we're trying to calculate. So this one, we'll be solving for C2. So we're back to our original um, equation. We've just rearranged it algebraically to solve for the new concentration. And now we plug in the values from the question. So there's our con initial concentration. And there is our volume. And then our ultimate volume, when we're mixed everything together, will be 150 milliliters. So we punch these, this data into our calculator. And we see that the new concentration, our calculator tells us, would be 0 0.7417% mass over volume, all right? Because in this case now, the milliliters cancel, and we're left with concentration units. Once we finish the calculation, big breath, look back, compare the sig figs of our data, three sig figs, two sig figs, and this would actually be three sig figs. All right, because the uncertainty was here and here, so I should have put a decimal there. All righty, but remember that our data is always limited by the, wor the least accurate and precise, so we would round our answer to two sig figs. Leading zeros never count, so 0.74% mass over volume glucose would be the solution we prepared. Alrighty. So I hope that you, you find these practice problems helpful. And now you want to go and work a few homework problems to reinforce what we've just practiced together.